started. So welcome to Virtual Business Week here at Beautiful Faces Going Places. I am so thrilled that you all have taken the time to join us this week. And I just wanna let you know why I designed Virtual Business Week. You know, 90 days ago, we were all uh, just kind of um, impacted <laughs> suddenly at, with a, an entire change in our daily lives, in our business lives, and we all had to adapt, right? And yes, I'm gonna use that word pivot. We had to pivot as well. <laughs> so um, here we are adapting and uh, innovating and finding way, new ways of being, not only just personally in our personal lives, but in our business lives as well. And um, so I came up with the idea of Virtual Business Week. And I've got to tell you, I, I was totally uh, getting zoomed out. <laughs> and um, as I was sharing uh, the other day, I... Uh, got a little dizzy, you know, and I believe I have a little bit of vertigo. And I was sharing that with Jim Gray. I see he's on here and he's like, okay, uh, maybe Carol, you have zoom ago, not vertigo, but zoom ago. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, I think we're all feeling that. So I created virtual business week so that uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's an all week event and our attendees and our guests can log in and hear some fabulous uh, trainings and speaker presentations that'll really help small business own owners and entrepreneurs um, in their businesses. So that was the idea so that we're not spending five hours, eight hours on a whole virtual conference getting uh, zoomed out and zoom ago. So it's, it's little snippets every day with uh, an opportunity to ask the experts um, to really dive into what's going on with your business, as well as doing some networking and meeting some new faces, which is what we all need to be doing. So um, here we are with Virtual Business Week. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go ahead because we're, there's enough of us on here today. Uh, I would love for you just to, your name and your company, let's introduce ourselves. And then we're going to dive into our special uh, guest speaker today. So I'm going to start with you, Neil, because I see your beautiful face first. So uh, we'll just go around the room and just your company name and uh, your name and your business. Okay. Uh, my name is Neil Pishka. My company is The Fragrance Guy. Awesome. And Marianne? Or Marianne Bailey? Oh, all right. How about Cindy Stewart? <laughs> Hi, how is, how is, how are you today? <laughs> my name is Cindy Stewart and my business is your travel escape. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And Rebecca. Thank you for having me. <laughs> my name is Rebecca Victor and my business is Your Joyful Path. And I'm excited to be here and looking forward to the speaker. Awesome. And Deborah, good to see you, Deborah Fawaz. Hey everybody, I'm Deborah Day Fawaz and my company is called Didi Faces. Awesome, and we are going to be hearing from you, I believe, on Tuesday. <laughs> All about first impressions. Yay. We're super excited about that. Good morning, Celeste, or good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, uh, Celeste Giordano, founder of Celeste Giordano Coaching, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Carol. Uh, we're thrilled to have you, Celeste. Yes, ma'am. Jim, good to see you. Hi, good to be here. I'm Jim Gray, I'm a videographer. And it's great to be here. I'm up to learn some good stuff. Awesome. And Amita, lovely to see you. <laughs> hi. Hi, everyone. I had to pop over from seeing a client. So sorry I'm joining you late. Uh, Amita Ghosh from Resolve Counseling and Consulting. And I specialize in couples counseling. We're thrilled that you're here, Amita. And Deborah Daniel, great to see you. Your audio is coming in and out. No. No. 
we'll move on to Teresa and then we'll, we'll get back to you. Hi, Teresa Vermillion. My business is Lighter Life Coach. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Teresa. My pleasure. Thanks. And Lisa. Lisa Kenton, Siege Peak Business Solutions. All right. We're glad you're here. And Amy Elberfeld. I'm not sure if she's on, but she is. Oh, there she is. I am on. I just finished exercising, so it was either come on and shoot up that cheat picture <laughs> or, and too embarrassed to show my face. My it's name okay. is Amy Elberfeld with Styling with Amy, and I am an editor with Storyline Collection Fashions, which is all about capsule dressing. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're here, Amy. Love your new uh, Storyline Collection that you're representing. Thank you. Yeah. And um, let's see, I think we've gone a, a, a around the room and everyone has introduced themselves. I think we lost Marianne Bailey. Um, and Deborah Daniels is one of our speaker presenters. Um, she's actually going to be our grand finale on Friday. And she is a CPA out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with Charter Accounting Services. And I cannot wait to hear all about uh, finances, profitability, and wealth, <laughs> which is something that we all need right now, right? And ongoing, so. All right, well, we are gonna go ahead and get our program started here. So I am going to um, just share my screen here. So we're gonna kick it off today with um, our special presentation by uh, the CEO and founder of the Expressory, Jamie Shibley. Now, Jamie is a relationship marketing specialist and expert and gift strategist. Uh, Jamie helps her clients create long-term business loyalty using a signature design formula to curate the perfect relationship building scenario. So I am super excited to introduce her. And I just thought the best way to introduce Jamie really is to showcase for her fabulous website here and to share this lovely video. Hello. Did you know that the average business will lose around 20% of their customer database each year simply by failing to connect with them? Like most business owners, you probably know you need to nurture your customer more, but you just can't get to it. You're so busy actually running your business that the relationship building efforts get pushed down the list of priorities until you just don't do it. My name is Jamie Shibley and I'm the founder and CEO of The Expressory, where we design and execute thoughtful customer experiences for business owners. Technology has changed where, when, and how customers shop, but it's also had a major impact on how we manage customer relationships. Customers have more options than ever, and they are demanding more in exchange for their loyalty. We help you design a campaign with a personal touch that your customers are craving, such as a handwritten card, when was the last time you received a handwritten card other than your birthday or a holiday? I would love to help you review your entire customer journey and explore options for improving your customer experience. Visit my website today to schedule a call. I look forward to making it easier for you to have more profitable customer relationships. Well, please help me welcome Jamie Shibley. Jamie. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's nice to be here. All well, right. I'm thrilled to have you. So um, I'm just going to let you take it away because we were just sharing before everyone jumped on about how important it is to develop that customer relationship uh, marketing strategy throughout the year because sometimes we really just get into diving into working in our businesses, on our businesses that we forget about uh, loving on our customers and our clients. So, all right, it's all yours, Jamie. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to apologize up front. It has just gotten really dark here and a storm is coming. So uh, hopefully the internet holds up for me here, but um, that's the story. Okay, so, um, I am so glad to uh, be invited to talk to you today. Uh, Carol and I met 
back in March when I spoke to her chapter um, at eWomen Network in Ohio. And it was probably exactly one week before everything got shut down. <laughs> it was the last time I gave this talk. Um, and so why I share that is what's kind of funny about what has happened is about nine months ago, I got to thinking that, um, you know, the world is so digital and we're all about high tech, high touch, um, you know, high tech, and we've kind of left behind this high touch. And so it was time to get out and start having this conversation about getting back to some of the basics of relationship building. And so I started traveling around giving this talk about how times have changed and then times changed again. <laughs> and we all got shut down. We all spent three months at home. And the crazy thing is it kind of proved my point even more so. And so what I want to do today is I want to have another, I, I want to have this talk with you. I'll, I'll share um, the talk I gave in March, but I'm going to shift it up a little bit and bring in uh, just what has happened and how um, much more important COVID <laughs> has made this relationship building effort. Um, all right. So if you would have heard me talk in March, where, where I start with this is, um, you know, our worlds, we're all taught we need to be focused on online and have it. We can reach the masses, right? And so we all know about producing content and we're out there and we're online. And on any given day, you're probably faced with getting lost in all those three second videos because they have entire platforms for those now. Um, and if we're lucky, we get a 30 second video we get drawn into. Meanwhile, you've got probably three, four different social platforms you have to keep up with or maybe get lost in. Uh, and then you're getting all this breaking news and headlines every few seconds. And all the while, our email boxes are filling up, right? On average, what, 50 to 100 messages a day. And so this, this barrage, I mean, it actually had a name, it has a name. It's called the Attention Age. And so we are living in the first time in history where we have access to far more information than we have time to consume, which is forcing us all to ration what gets our attention. So your customers are living this day to day. They're rationing what gets their attention. Focus is now a skill set. And then all of a sudden they remember, oh, oh I got to buy that thing. And off they go. So you, as a business owner, did your thing show up in that split second decision to make that purchase? And then the bigger question is, did you do everything you could to capture their attention for the long term? So are they gonna remember you again in the future? Because what's happened with all of this commotion and attention rationing is that you know, relationship building has once again just become a very critical component of your business success. And I know that every relationship building or every um, self-help book, right, in business going back to God knows when will tell you that relationship building is key to success. But here's the thing that's, that's changed for us is business owners are now also rationing what gets our attention because we're being hit by all this same commotion. And what that has come to mean is that most people are putting off the relationship building efforts that one time ensured success and created those businesses. And so right now, I mean, when you think about it and you're rationing what gets your attention, what does that mean when we're overwhelmed? We're, we're either cutting corners or we're not doing it at all, right? And what HubSpot will tell you in their research, and I believe there are many others, is that that's exactly what's happening, as most people are not doing it anymore. Because as you saw in that video, the stat is that on average, a business owner is losing 20% of their customer database just by failing to connect. So because you do nothing to connect with those customers, 20% of your contact list is gone every year. And now we introduce COVID times. And we just spent three months 
being, you know, locked away from the very thing we as humans crave, which is personal connection, right? And guess what happened? Guess whose phone was ringing off the hook? Because everybody just realized when we were forced to stay away and we have, we don't have the luxury of face-to-face -face connection anymore. Well, how else am I going to make that impact? How else am I going to show people I, you know, I'm here, I care, they should trust me. And so suddenly we had this shift of, okay, I've got to do something different. I need to show up differently. And I think that that's the thing that we're going to find, you know, everybody talks about, well, you know, maybe we're using this time to develop new habits and maybe there are some things we shouldn't get rid of when we go back to normal. And I think that's the thing that I really want to see coming out of this is uh, it is my hope that we're going to start to see a world of more leaders who come from a place of compassion and true thoughtfulness. Okay. Because as a business, if you can show me that you see me and you, you, you're acknowledging me, you have my loyalty. I am no longer just a number in your database, right? So I think the reason that this um, you know, hits me so personally is I, I grew up in small business. My grandfather owned a flower shop for 40 years and you know, we used to work there on the holidays and busy seasons. And you, know, you watched relationship building back in those days at its finest, right? We didn't have this online thing. People found you because of who they knew, maybe that yellow book, um, or because they drove by. Um, and so every relationship you had mattered you know, from the people who worked with you, uh, your family and friends, obviously, but heck, even your competitors were a source uh, of referrals. And, and you just nurtured those relationships because it's what you knew, it's who you were. So the best example I can give is that my grandfather, you know, he closed his business and uh, 20 years later, my step-grandmother passed away this last year. And just as he had for my grandma, he wanted to be the one to create her floral arrangements for the funeral, but he didn't have a space this time. Well, the son of one of his competitors opened his doors so my grandpa could come in and do this. I mean, you talk about 20 years after this man is in business and he still has that kind of relationship with the son of one of his competitors, like that's when you know you have built a true long lasting brand, right? Those are the kind of relationships I'm talking about that we need to get back to building. Uh, if you know Gary V, um, he talks about, we are going to have to see a time where uh, entrepreneurs or the business leaders of the world get back to the basics that our great grandparents used to build their businesses successfully. And I think that's what we're seeing today. Um, we just got hit over the head with, you know, things have to look a little differently and people want to be seen. All right. So, um, what I want to share with you today uh, is the process we go through with our clients to identify the opportunities where you could actually bring in some more relationship building, high touch back to your business, um, and then give you the three examples of how you can do that. So where we start is um, we want everybody to take a look at their overall customer journey. Give me one second. Now, every brand, every business has its own customer journey. It's the touch points, or it's the events, I guess we would say, where you have an opportunity to have touch points with your customers. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, all right. Give me a head nod if you can see this. I think we're good. All right. Great. Thank you. So when we look at your customer journey, what we suggest that there is that there are three buckets that you can, um, that events fall into. So there are, the, there are the occasions or the opportunities that happen before someone is even a customer of yours. Things like when you're out networking, that's a touch point with someone. When you um, want to thank someone for a referral, that's outside of anybody being your customer. And then you have the opportunities 
when the person becomes a customer? What are all the little events in there that, that you could use to reach out to them in a different way? Um, and then you have things that are triggered by you as the business. So maybe it's just because. Maybe you use the launch of, an, of a book you've written as a reason to get in touch. Um, but there, there are different things in here. Now, what you want to do for your business is you want to write down or you know, circle the different things, the different opportunities here that apply to your business. And the key is going to be consistency. So you want to pick the things here that you think you could create and execute a, um, a relationship building touch point that you could be consistent about. So maybe you choose the welcome of a new sale and we'll get into that in a bit, but you wanna do that only if you believe you can really be consistent about when you're executing that, okay? Because it's the consistency and the over time this is the long game, people, this relationship building thing, right? So you want to make sure that's where you're going to get the most return. Now, um, at the end, I will give you a website where you can see these. Um, you'll have that in front of you and uh, give you a way where we can have an opportunity to chat a bit more about this. Okay, I come back to that. So let me stop sharing again for a bit here. So let's, let's start with three of the basics that we share with customers. The very first thing that we recommend you implement is a referral recognition program. So if you don't have this today, make this a priority. And what this is, this is going to, a referral engine when done right, should serve um, as a way to build and fund all of your other relationship building opportunities because it's going to sit and bring you more and more business. So the idea here is, I think where most people stop short is we say we have this program, but we do it once and we don't do it again. Okay. So if Carol sends me three referrals, I am going to thank her all three times. You don't just do it once because what you're doing is you're building in that, um, you know, what gets rewarded gets repeated. Um, that's what we want. That's the pattern we want to get into here. Um, now, how you can make this easy is sit down today and write down what is the thank you message you write and send every time someone sends you a referral. Write it down, print it out, leave it on your desk, because then every time someone sends you, you don't have to think about it anymore. That's where a lot of our customers, when, when I talk to people, that's where I hear a lot of people get tripped up. It's like, well, then I got to think about the message. And then I just, I don't know what to say. So then I just forget it. Right. I get it. Write it down now. Um, now, if you want an example of this done well, there's a company called uh, Sticker Giant. Now the Sticker Giant, I heard, now they're a big company today. I heard the CEO interviewed and he was sharing that as they were growing, what they recognize is the importance of recognizing referrals. And so they built it into the job description of their customer service team. They said, you will go and you will look for instances of people sending us referrals. And so once or twice a week, whatever that may be, somebody's job is to go and look for those. And on any given month, and then they send a little surprise package. And so they share that they can have, a, they've had months of 45 different referrals reforded, re, rewarded. <laughs> Imagine what 45 referrals a month would look like in your business, right? I mean, for some of us, just imagine what five, you know, 10 a month would look like. So get that pattern, get that behavior going for yourself. All right. So the number two thing I want to work on is, or suggest, is um, a welcome or some sort of unique close of sale gift. So when someone signs with you to do business, what kind of experience are you laying out from the beginning? What if your brand had this, this wonderful customer experience from the moment these people said yes to working with you? What do you think you'd set yourself up for? 
there long term, right? People would rave about you. And that's the key here. Whatever you choose to give for this welcome, you want it to be something that uh, is meaningful to the recipient, but also does reflect your brand or whatever it is you're working on with the customer. Because when it's valuable to them, you are making it very easy for them to share what you just did. Share that experience online. Imagine the power of having the eyeballs of all their followers. For them to say, oh my gosh, you know, look at what Cindy just sent to me. This is crazy. I love, I'm so excited to work with her. And then I get this. Okay, so that's what you're setting up with this. Now, how you, um, one way that you can design something that is meaningful and something that you give is we tell people to look for a milestone that you're working on when, um, with this customer or a milestone that maybe the customer has already hit as a result of using your products or services. Because milestones are an, one attribute of a gift um, that creates a long-term bond. They, they create this stickiness, if you will. When, in, when, the, when a gift reflects a milestone, I'm not gonna throw that away because it's something I'm working toward and it's gonna remind me of that. And that's the kind of gift that gets you recognized, right? Now, let me give you an example. I, let me bend over here. I have had this book for almost 20 years. It's about leadership. If you can see inside, it's got this message. That's the reason I've had this book for 20 years. So my corporate days, I was working um, with a manager. We were launching a new um, division to the company. So it was brand new to the company. We were traveling around. We were doing great stuff. We were working with sales teams. Sales teams are always fun, right? And so I am um, I'm in the middle of we'd just gotten this brand new project and I was going to lead it and it was going to really set me up for my next promotion in my career. And then the company asked my manager to go take another job. And I was so crushed because this guy was, you know, he, I was like your sponsor, right? He got me, he was really set me up and it was just a good manager. So when he was leaving, he, he gives me this book about leadership and in the book, he writes, um, you know, it was a really great time working with you. They had so much fun, which that right there is another attribute of a gift that will ensure longevity. Shared experiences. So we referenced a sh our shared time together and that, you know, it was a great memory. We had fun. Um, and then he went on to say that, you know, you're going to do great with this project. Someday you're going to be a leader. And, and someday I hope that um, you'll remember me when you're building your team. So um, I have kept that book on my desk, uh, you know, on the bookshelf. And I've referenced it. And every time that I would get um, kind of discouraged, there's that book. You're right. Someday I am going to be a leader. Um, so that's an, well, and so I also married that man six years ago now, <laughs> so different kind of relationship building, I say, but um, that is the kind of message and gift, right, that makes a difference, and here's what I want you guys to know. You can have that kind of impact with just a card alone and your message. It doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. You just have to tap into these little attributes that make the meaning, okay? Um, all right, so I hope that helps with um, the, the welcome uh, or close of sale kind of gift. Um, so now where I wanna share the third one is let's get a focus of um, retention building, okay? You've probably heard the stats that it costs you, what, five to seven times more to get a new client. But what about all of the existing clients. And here's the crazy thing is that I think what a lot of us overlook is that those existing clients, when they do repeat, they're gonna spend more with you. They spend up to 30% more, 31% more actually, I think, um, when they do buy again. 
right? So we put all this money to lead gen and all this stuff, but if we just took a little piece of that and worked on the database we have today, there's gold in there. So what we wanna, what I wanna suggest is um, how you can implement this practice of working with the database you have. And so what we say is take a look at the database today and obviously segment, right? Everybody is heard different ways of segmenting business to your VIPs and whatnot. But what if you took a look at the list and chopped it up into a few buckets? Um, maybe there's a group of people where you just flat out haven't heard from them in a while, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now that in this time we've been living in, what we've all just experienced, if you focused on that group alone, you would probably make a huge impact in your business. If you just simply showed up and said, hey, haven't heard, haven't, you know, haven't seen you in a while. I hope all is well with you and your family. It's been a crazy time. Just wanna celebrate summer together. Leave it at that. You know what I mean? Like there are, there are little ways and think about the engagement because holy cow, yeah, it has been a while and you just sent me a message? Wow, you know what I mean? Think about what that would open up. Um, then what about the list in your database that maybe they have the, they could really be good customers if you um, just nurtured that relationship a bit. Um, so there are different ways. The point is get that list. How many are there? Because then your next step is break that out into reasonable chunks, okay? Reasonable numbers. How many do you think you could reach out to in a week? You know, maybe it's just a month. I want to do three a month. Set that goal and then just start plugging away at it. So I will give you an example of um, this done really well. We have, um, we work with a number of podcasters and podcasters are a lot of times in business and B2B space um, because they, uh, maybe they're interviewing people that would be great clients of theirs uh, or they're interviewing people that could open up amazing doors for them. Either way, they just had a really fun interaction. You know, there's no... Um, Oh, it's, it's not like there's, you know, selling involved in a podcast. It's usually just a fun conversation. And so using that podcast shared experience to get back in front of them after the conversation is huge in relationship nurturing. And so one of our clients reported that in a year, so what she does is after every podcast interview, she sends a handwritten thank you. And then um, I'm going to put this down again so I can kind of see everyone. So handwritten thank you. And then four weeks later, she sends them a gift. And it says, it's a quote of something they said during the, the interviewee said during the podcast call. And the message says, I'm still thinking about our conversation. It was wonderful. Here's something really impactful I think you shared with the listeners. Thanks for being a guest. Well, she gets all of them. I mean, she gets people in, I've been in meetings with clients uh, or with some of her guests where they've actually brought the um, gift and shared it with the entire room. I've heard people talking about how the gift was shared at other events. Um, in one year's time frame. now you think about she does one podcast interview a week. In, in the course of a year, she was able to convert 27% of those listeners to clients. What is the value of a client, you guys? What is the lifetime value of one of your clients? And what if you can convert love numbers like that because of the nurturing? And I, I would bet that's worth your investment, okay? Because it doesn't take much. Um, we had another guy who sent out, he selected his top 25 potential candidates, okay? He just calls them his top 25. In a lot of cases, they're really influential people that he wants to build better relationships with. He sends them um, a, as a frame uh, that the person can hang. So he sends them a gift. And then, I think his is six weeks later, he follows up with a book. And it references a specific chapter and why it would be valuable. 
the first time we sent out nine of his frames on a Friday, and by Monday, half of those people were posting about it and raving about it online. Think about that engagement, right? Again, you're just making it really easy because you're an awesome, thoughtful person <laughs> that these guys rave about you. And so it's that earned media, that earned recognition that you're going to get. All right. Um, so I guess let me, let's just, summarize what we we chatted about here um let's move this again what you want to do is you want to go through your customer journey and you want to look at the the three different buckets and select some events and occasions that you're going to be able to think of ways to add in that personal touch and then the three things we talked about that you could start doing today um, are your referral recognition, receive, reward, and repeat that, um, your welcome gift, and a retention gift. And with all of these things, sit down and write your message today so you don't have to think about it when each of these instances happens. Now, I think we'll get into uh, some questions and some additional conversation. I'll go look at the chat. Um, I know it, you guys have been sharing. Thank you so much. Um, what I want to do is I want to make sure that that journey, that customer journey and the ideas and the brainstorming, I am always happy to help you brainstorm ideas that are specific to your brand um, because I know that's what's important. We want that meaning. We want your thoughtfulness to come through. So that link will take you to the customer journey that I shared and at the bottom of that page um, there'll be space to set up some time to chat with me uh, and you know feel free to shoot me an email directly as well. Um, man okay Boy, you guys, thank you so much for all these messages. <laughs> so um, what questions, Carol, what, what do yeah, we got? No, that was fantastic. I just loved um, your entire message and presentation. And I, I think one of the things that really resonates with me is um, consistency and, and just creating a customer experience that is personalized. Um, and if you do that consistently over time, uh, the impact that it can have with your your business. So, I mean, you you spelled it out to make and made it seem so simple, but I don't know why many of us struggle with implementing <laughs> a, a thank you program or a recognition program or a I'm thinking of you program. You know what I mean? I think yeah. I I don't know why we struggle with that, but um, because you you laid it out and made it look so simple and easy. <laughs> well, you know, I usually hear two things. One, okay, I'm not good. I don't know what to say. Okay, that's a block. And and two is, okay, you know, I know I want to do this, but I just can't figure out what to give. Well, it's actually, there's three, right? And then there's, of course, the, I don't have time and I don't want my people touching this. Um, but I think it's that idea of what to give mm -hmm. that really trips because there are endless options. And so when you start to sit down and dig into, you know what, I'm just gonna buy this book. Oh, well, which book? Well, if I wanna send this gift, shoot, do I buy this one or do I buy the three pack or do I get the, you know, and then we just stop, forget it. I don't have time for this. So. I, I think you identified what, what to say, uh, what to give, and then the time to orchestrate and implement and deliver the, the impact. So, um, yeah, I think you identified that for me. And, and I, what I love about this format is that um, this is our opportunity just to have an open conversation, Q&A, and, uh, and feedback for Jamie and any questions that you have for her. So this is going to be just an open floor, open floor format. So thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Deborah. <laughs> oh no. Oh. I know it's it's gotta be driving Deborah Daniels crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey Deborah, yeah. why don't you try headphones? Do you have a set of headphones that'll plug in? 
Maybe that'll bypass the uh, speaker. Amy, do you have any catalogs or places you go for your gifts or you, like give me some like examples of little, I, I think the book idea was a good one because you make it personalized, written something. But like, um, what kind of gifts do you think would be your top like candy, flowers? I mean, thank you cards, notes. Yeah. Candy um, has always been, um, you know, is always a big uh, seller. I think that's kind of like our go-to when all else fails. Um, you know, I've been, we've been doing a lot of gifts related to growth. What we try to do is we, we try to curate um, seasonal items, right? So right now um, I have a summer seasonals list. We've got um, their little seed poppers. They look like lollipops. You, they're seeds. You just stick the, you tip them upside down, you plant them in the dirt and they're for hummingbirds and bees and, um, oh, I forget the third one, but um, think of the story there. Hey, you know, thanks for your help growing my business. Um, I'm so excited to work with you to grow whatever, you, you know, whatever your specialty is. Um, so there are a lot of different angles you can take with that. Um, I'm trying to think of, so again, you know, for me, it's all about stories. So we, we do, oh, another big one is um, what about little um, drinks? So I'm going to say drink kit, but I, I don't mean it that it has to be alcohol. We, we have champagne candles. We have champagne little sugar mixers. We have lemonade uh, drink mixes. Actually, I have one sitting here. Well, little, little mix kit. But here's, here's my point in all of this. I toast to you. Let me buy you a drink. Let me, right, um, share a drink with someone on me. So it's a whole theme depending on how you want to use it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cindy. <laughs> You just really made me think of something. So, so I'm a travel advisor and so my business is a little different right now yes. because I've been spending time helping people get their money back, this, that, and the other. So, but that made me think when you said, you know, the champagne candle or something like that. So I'm thinking maybe those that had to cancel a trip to Italy, maybe I could send them some food related, um, the wine something mm -hmm. to think about okay you know we will be doing that again but in the meantime here's um you know something for you and i did send them all handwritten cards Good. thanking Good. them for their business and you know can't wait to you know help you travel again kind of thing but i never thought about the gift in between so i'd like that thank you it's the future mm -hmm. milestone think yes. about that yes. right because yes. Yes. i had to cancel mm -hmm. a trip of my own well, <laughs> bet that I cannot wait till we can get back on that plane, right? So even right. if it's something as simple yeah. as here's the pillow, because when you get back on that plane someday, or right, when, right? Yes. But if yeah. you make it specific to where they mm -hmm. that dream trip they had, oh, right, golden, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Deborah, you're back. Right. Well, I dialed in on my phone. Something's up with my mic. I don't know. But um, what I wanted to say is I totally loved everything that you said, and it fits so much in with what we'll be talking about throughout the week, I'm sure. Yes. But one of my points that I often talk about is we spend so much time chasing new customers when really once a buyer, always a buyer. We should be nurturing those people. It's actually a funny little thing that, I mean, my husband's always like, why are you going to network so much? We have a thousand clients. Why aren't you staying here and loving on those clients? I mean, I'm never going to stop networking, but... The, I mean, there is a fortune, a treasure in your database and nurturing them and loving on them and doing the things that Jamie was talking about is actually probably your biggest ROI of time, of money that, that you can spend. It really is. Thank you. See, I'm glad that totally aligns. <laughs> yes. So Jamie, real quick. Um, I work with people in automating some of their processes and things like that. And part of that might just be actually reminders 
that get put on their calendar to send out that thank you note with the address attached. So it's super easy for them to do that. And it sounds like it might even be a good idea for me to suggest that they put the actual message that they want to send in that so that they can have that reminder with the message and the, and the address but all together. Um, yeah. What I'm wondering is with products and things like that, is there an automatic way where you can, for a certain type of sale, have maybe a certain type of product that goes out with kind of like that thank you kind of note? Is there a way to do something like that? Or does everything kind of require a, you know, stop you, and put that order in? No. Are you talking about um, when working with me specifically, or are you talking about in general? Working with you in general, that type of thing, is that something that you guys do is make that kind of a really simple process to happen so that, you know, these companies can get, because everyone's looking for time, right? Right. And so I'm always talking to people about like, you have time to do all these things if you put them in a process. So do you, you work with, you have a CRM, is that what you do? You have a um, I work on automations. So, so it's like connecting the CRM with all the different things they want to get done, right? Yeah. Um, so 100%, that's where we like to go as well. I come from the IT background and, and used to train sales, right? So I know the more you introduce like, okay, you got to get in this system to do that and this system to do that, like it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's absolutely what we look to do is when we're looking at that customer journey and we say, okay, we're going to do this thing and we're going to do the welcome and we're going to do this. What is it that we do when the welcome happens? And some of our clients even have like a tier. So when it's the first time they buy, I'm sending this thing. Mm. When it's the second time they buy, I change up the message and it has this stuff. Um, one of our uh, customers is a coach and so she has different level of um, levels of working with her in each one while they build on each other it might have a different workbook or it's got a different um, kind of treat that goes with them and so um, you're you're right when you look at the automation a number of our clients in their CRM they have a that same type so if we say welcome one on our side we know the message that goes with it and we know the five things that go in the gift. On their side, all they have to do is have like a tag or field that mm -hmm. says welcome one so yeah. that when it gets sent to us, all it's saying is address and welcome one. And everybody knows what needs to happen. So that's exactly what we do. You're, you're very much on um, the right track is to automate this as much as possible. Yeah, because that's what I always recommend people is they've got to put it into their process. They've got to put it into their daily, whatever they're doing. Um, yep. And some of it can actually go out automatically, but yep. some yep. of it needs to have that personal touch too. For sure. Thank you. Amy, I know you've been waiting that low. <laughs> Amy, are you able to share that list that you talked about of things that you're kind of offering this summer and pricing just so we can get an idea of I did. whether or not it's something that would fit in our business budget? Yeah. Can you see this? The screen? Um, so, and I can put, I'll put this in the, the chat real quick, but um, here's what we we curate three or four different things okay so here's that those seed poppers with the handwritten card and shipped you're close to 30 bucks but they get three um this is one of my favorites um jim is it jim right not james <laughs> yeah okay jim um the tree pl planting a tree is one of my favorites <laughs> um so oh, we, I love that planting a tree boy. That's, that's cool. So we found this great tree kit. Um, we used to have little seed saplings. Um, they used to come in a burlap sap, but this is nice because it's, it's not actually even started. Um, but yeah, lots of different See, And one of the things we try to do is kind of um, set up the messaging up front to give you the ideas. Uh, and then here's these little lemonade things. Now, um, when you go here, there'll be a few other packages you can, can look at as well. Uh, I'm just getting ready to oops, stop sharing, launch um, old, the, a new version of the website this week. So here, I'll put that in there. But hopefully that helps, Amy. Thank you. Is there a minimum that we need to do? 
So as a guest, you're welcome to purchase. Um, you, can, you can have one mailing uh, without having to be part of the service. Ongoing, we do a setup. Um, there's, a, there's a whole setup process, setup fee. Um, and then there are no minimums that you have to meet. Uh, there, we, we track it all and bill you monthly for it, whatever you use. Okay. Yeah, because I may want to send something just to show hostesses hmm. periodically well, that do. Okay. Yeah, well, um, you know what, message me and we can, I can share a bit more about what that would look like. What do you mean hostesses, Amy? Um, people that host storyline shows, like um, I had someone host a Zoom storyline collection show last week and um, maybe sending something extra to her other than um, the free item that she received. So they, they have you on the show, is that the idea that someone invites you to be? They host a show, they invite their friends and I show oh, the storyline cool. collection fashions by Zoom. Got it. And then people place orders and then the hostess can pick a free item from the collection. But, um, I may want to do something a little bit extra for people who do host a Zoom show or a Facebook show or a live show. I mean, when we get back to when people are comfortable having people in their homes and showing the Storyline fashion collection. Amy, mm -hmm. is, is, is Storyline yours? Did you launch that? I did not launch it, but it's a new company. I used to be with a different company that... Yeah close suddenly but storyline collection is um started by our ceo is amy amy lamphere and yes. our designer is sunil i talked to amy probably a year ago i knew okay. that the, the the line sounded familiar so good for her yeah she launched it in november okay and um i joined a few months ago but love the whole company love her sunil is amazing okay. it's fabulous Great. Yeah, all right. Cool. Well, anything else I've got? Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, anyone yeah. else have any comments or questions for Jamie? I do. Hey, Celeste. Hey, hey how are you? Good to Hi. see you again. I loved your this presentation more than I loved it in <laughs> March because you are so on point. You know, every day we hear people talk about not having enough sales, not having enough sales. What they really don't have is enough lead generation. And this process that you offer is a tremendous lead generation tool to build relationships. So kudos to you for being on point and sharing this uh, with all these amazing ladies and men today. It's awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you're so right. Yeah, absolutely. This is a lead generation tool as well. Yeah. And Celeste would know since she is a, a sales coach and business strategist. So yeah, yeah, this is, and, and Jamie, you just make it sound like I said, uh, so easy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, why are we not doing more of this? You know, I'm loving on our customers and yeah. uh, future clients and, you know, potential and um, as uh, Deborah Daniels also pointed out our database, you know, we have a database already existing and right. circle back. Yeah. Teresa, you had a question? Yeah, sometimes I struggle with just finding a physical address for people. And usually if they're already a client, which I really appreciate that we should be, how much we should be loving on them more. Um, I'll ask for that on an intake form from them, but um, you know, if it's someone that's a warm lead to, or you just want to reach out to people, like you said, during this time, just kind of as a, from a place of connection, is there a magical place we can find physical addresses for people these days? Cause <laughs> like the yellow book, um, I'm like, where are those now? Yeah, <laughs> no. is online. Yeah, they are. Um, here's, here's what we've found the best way is simply just ask. And if you don't, if you want it to kind of be a surprise that it's coming from you, have someone ask for you. Because when, when you actually say, hey, you know, um, we have someone who would like to send you something, send you a gift, nobody turns that down. I mean, rarely will you get someone to say, no, thanks. <laughs> okay. 
Um, but, but that's, we'll do that on behalf of customers sometimes. And, and I read, I read somewhere that people are willing to fill out a very long form simply if they know that they're going to get something out of it. They're willing to give you all sorts of personal information for it. So I think it was on um, customer experience and, and um, loyalty is where I was seeing that. So yeah, it's really the best. Thing. Yeah. Thank well, you. It's simple. Like, like why, why is it ever complicated? Just ask them. I, I know, I know we do. It's funny. Like it to be, um, I guess like not them, like, yeah, a surprise, like I was thinking of you and I didn't even tell you I was thinking of you. I don't know. <laughs> I would imagine if you say, I'd like to send you a thank you note, that would get a similar response without necessarily saying, and by the way, there's going to be a gift attached to. Yeah. Right. We would just say, Jamie. Yeah. Hey, that was fabulous. Thank you. Um, I do a series of Facebook Live tutorials, and I send people if they engage and comment, not just if they like. And I tell them that, you know, how I want them to respond. Um, and then I just get on Messenger because a lot of times these are people I don't really know. They Facebook friended me. They like my page, but they're not yet my client. Um, no one has ever turned me down when I get on Messenger and say, hey, you won this week. I'd love to send you your gift. They yeah. immediately send you their address, even before they're your client. <laughs> yeah. See, it's funny. But it does. I know it feels awkward to ask. But um, once you do it once, it, it's, yeah, you're all good. So does anyone have any, um, I mean, Jamie, you might have some ideas or um, a few of our, our other coaches on here of uh, a simple CRM system to keep track of uh, potential clients, current clients, you know? Yeah, <laughs> well, we know I do. Cause yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love my, um, it's, it's called Cultivating Sales Pro. Um, and it's it's an all-in-one tool so you can have people text you you can do your emails it's it lets you build your funnels it's actually what I've used to rebuild my website uh, the thing is just so smooth and it's an all-in-one price so that's and it's got that automation that you know Lisa was was chatting about right what's it called again Cultivating Sales Pro, and if you uh, are interested, we can give you an introduction to the um, owner. Um, but great connection. Yes, she. They are fabulous to work with. In fact, we are going to be switching our platform to Cultivating Sales here um, by the middle of July. So I've signed up for their program, and I'm excited to really. Uh, implement some of the strategies that you were sharing with us today really about that onboarding cult building that culture and that customer relationship over time and um, it looks like a great program so I was hoping Melissa or her daughter Stephanie would be no. joining us today I invited them so um, I think they might pop in sometime dur during the week right. so that would be a great opportunity to to meet them since we'll be spending some time together this week um, hopefully you'll get a chance to meet them but yeah yeah it looks great i'm looking forward to seeing your new site as well yeah thank you um i do know melissa had um a very close friend pass away this weekend so okay. there may be um you may not hear from her but um yeah yeah, yeah the daughter okay. for sure well good to know yeah, yeah. no thank you mm -hmm. all right does anyone have any other questions or comments for jamie Jamie, you were just phenomenal, and uh, thank you so much. You really, I know for myself personally, I, I just want to step back and say, what is my, customer, my customer's journey and experience here at Beautiful Faces Going Places? Because it is so important to me in everything that we do that it is about the experience, you know? I want to make sure everyone feels like their, their voices are heard, their faces are seen, and uh, that that they're gaining, they're just getting so much value here. So 
Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That. Thank you. All right. Well, we are going to continue. Oh. It's, I'm sorry. I yes. just want to say a quick question. Do we all have Jamie's contact info? Mm. I'll, I'll put it in there. Thank Perfect. you. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll, we'll make sure everyone saves the chat. Um, I will be sending out the video daily video replays from our session okay. and our speaker speaker presentations and trainings uh, and that way you've got all of their information as well and then you can rewatch if you want to rewatch or for those that missed missed out they you know they can also tap into the training so uh, let's see here I think we are going to move on to a, a quick round of networking we're all here to meet new faces and make new connections and it really boils down to having some conversations and we've got a great conversation starter here uh, with um, you know uh, relationship building that Jamie shared with us and um, let's see here so here's what we're going to do next um, I'm assuming everybody has typed in their business card their contact information in the chat box we're gonna go ahead and break, do one round of uh, networking in a breakout room. And I'd like for you um, to rate your clients, customers experience with you in your company. Uh, so rate yourself one through 10, as we, once we go into the breakout room, uh, rate yourself one through 10. Uh, how is your, your client's customer experience with you? And what tools are you using to maximize your relationship marketing? So, I am going to uh, create that create that breakout room for you right now, and um, we're just going to do two rooms, and it's going to be 15 minutes. So go around the room, make sure everyone has a, a voice, and um, yeah, let's just have some fun. All right, here we go. Let's see here, two. So we'll have about 15 minutes, and I am going to. I am going to go ahead and open up the breakout rooms and so accept the invitation. <laughs> okay, well go ahead and unmute yourselves. I'm just curious to see how everybody rated themselves from one to 10. And how many of us, how many uh, rated themselves uh, a one? Two. Three. Four, five, okay, <laughs> four, five, so six, seven, eight, nine, and a perfect 10. Okay, <laughs> I guess the perfect 10 does not exist. <laughs> Carol, what did you rate you? What did I rate myself? Mm -hmm. um, I I would say I am probably a seven. There's a lot of room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing, Carol, that I love a, a lot about you is the voice messages that you send. And, you know, they are just always uplifting and you send them, whether it comes a text message or an email, they're, they're very uplifting and you do a great job communicating like mm -hmm. that. Well, thank you. Yeah, they say that energy that. is contagious, right? Or it's energy true. and excitement and enthusiasm. <laughs> thank you so much, Celeste. Yes, ma'am. Carol and I actually communicate through Marco Polo, so we're getting videos back and forth, which is kind of fun. It is fun. I love Marco Polo. I know uh, Neil is on Marco yeah. Polo, too. <laughs> I'm trying to get the rest of you on Marco Polo. So, <laughs> so yeah, Marco another Marco one. Yes, you, you introduced that as well. That is great. <laughs> That's a great tool. Right, Teresa. I love getting your Marco Polos. Yeah, <laughs> it's wonderful. We can, like you said, then we feed off of each other's energy and can ramble as much as we want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. All right. Did anyone have any takeaways or? Uh, or anything really for, for Jamie. Jamie, you were just incredible today. And what a wonderful way to kick off Virtual Business Week. I am just, now I'm just even more pumped and excited about what's in store for all of us um, with our uh, speakers. I know uh, Deborah is tomorrow all about uh, 
uh, first impressions. And Deborah, do you want to give us a little sneak peek or anything <laughs> for tomorrow? It was a sizzle reel. A sizzle reel, yeah. <laughs> Well, I am very honored to be here and meet with all of you again, and um, I feel very confident you will learn something you don't know and hopefully be a little kinder and gentler to yourself. This is my signature talk, which has shifted a little since March, and so it's not just all about your physical presence, it's about your online presence. And how do you make people feel when, you, when they walk away from spending time with you? So no worries, Neil and Jim. It's not a makeup lesson. <laughs> it's all about, it's all about um, ways to engage people so that you're memorable. You'll hear me say that word a lot tomorrow. What makes you memorable? I Very love good. it. I love it. Sounds good. Oh. Yeah, well, we're really super excited for your uh, signature talk tomorrow, Deborah. And um, so we have got uh, a giveaway to give away. So <laughs> a door prize, Jamie, tell us what your door, pri door prize is today and giveaway. And Marianne, are you ready to do a drawing? Um, have you made me co-host again? Because it's not letting me share. You bet. Hang on one second. And I can take care of that. It knocked me off when I was having internet problems earlier. Oh, so I went down with my phone so I could be here. Ah, no problem. Well, here you are, girlfriend. You're a co-host. <laughs> so, well, she's doing that real quick. So the giveaway is I will offer to do a, um, a mailing for you. It can either be to you to experience yourself, or you can select to mail the gift to one of your clients. And what we will do is we will do a movie night um, gift. So the gift will be a package of um, popcorn, some Twizzlers, and an iTunes gift card. Oh, so, nice. Wow. Yeah, That's awesome. a lovely gift. Hi, Marianne. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget me. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Hold on, because I'm going I to. I got this, Amy. <laughs> That's the last. You might be to... oh. <laughs> I've got the energy, Teresa. <laughs> I'm going to go over to the uh, app that picks it. Hold on. Well, how cool is that? <laughs> yep. So that way everybody sees. Okay. You guys ready? Cheers. Natalie Ritter, is she on? No. Nope. I have not seen her. We're not going to do this again, are we? Okay. <laughs> so what? Uh, I, I told you I had <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she is. Celeste, just send it to me, okay? <laughs> and then I'll tell you how my experience was. <laughs> You're going to record it and open it and share it for yeah, her? I will. There you and go. I'll even thank you for it. You can, open, you, can a, you can open up a Facebook room and we'll all share it together. Oh my God, this is the best. Make sure you tag us all, okay? Okay. <laughs> Shout out. All right, Celeste, I will, when we connect, you let me know where you want me to mail that. Yes, yes ma'am, I will. In private. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget to get my home address the last. <laughs> oh, you guys are fun. Fabulous. Congratulations, Celeste, on winning thank that. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, Jamie. Enjoy thank prize. you, Carol. <laughs> and thank you, Jamie, for your donation today and the giveaway and uh, for sharing your signature talk here, your passion at the Expressory, okay. and uh, really all about building relationships um, over time and how we can do that with consistency uh, and how that'll impact our bottom line. So this was just incredible. I know I have so many takeaways and I can't wait to start uh, implementing uh, some of these touch points. So thank you. Yeah, thank All you. right, I think we're gonna go ahead and sign off and I can't wait to see your beautiful faces tomorrow uh, with Deborah Fawaz of DD Faces and it's gonna be fabulous. So. All right, go out and have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye. Right, bye. 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 <laughs>